Hello friends, this is Shelly from Koala Knits and Knacks. Thank you so much for clicking on this video and joining me today as we uh, make these beautiful um, little blankets. You know, these are made out of Baby Delight yarn, which is a three weight yarn. Um, and they're just like, I think the perfect size for just a, a toddler to carry around or um, if, if uh, the mom wants to just throw a little blanket over their baby in the stroller. Um, it's actually just the, the um, dimensions are just a little bit smaller than a stroller blanket um, size that would be um, I think uh, 22 by 30 and this one's 21 and a half by 27 and a half. Um, you could always add another um, row of border if you want to make it a bit um, bigger but I just think they're the perfect size for um, just throwing over your baby when when you just need a little blanket um, in the car seat uh, in a stroller um, whether they're sitting on your lap and you just want to cover them or you know they'd be even great I mentioned it later on in the video too um, for for breastfeeding moms to throw over their shoulder and over the baby um, just a perfect size for so many things um, and and I just uh, have decided that I'm going to make them in sets of two and that's what I, I will show you in this video. And I'm going to sell them in sets of two because I just think it's, it's like buying receiving blankets. When you buy a receiving blanket, you buy more than one. And, uh, and these will sell, if, if you make things for market, um, these will sell as sets um, very, very easily, I'm sure. Um, I haven't, uh, I can't tell you that they have yet because I've just, this is a pat new pattern that I just came up with. Um, but I am confident that they will be something that um, young moms are going to absolutely love or grandmas to have on hand in their home. It's just such a beautiful, beautiful set. So um, I am making this on my Centro 40. Um, I, uh, I'm happy to to pull that out and, and use that in this video and I used very small amounts of the yarn so in each color so um, I can't really tell you exactly how many grams you don't need a you don't need very much at all in each color um, so once you uh, once you have your supplies ready let's get started all right so let's begin I am so excited because uh, I haven't used my 40 needle center in a while and so I was so thrilled to get it out because I do love my centros. I really, really do. Okay, so we're going to start with waist yarn. Okay, so grab a waist yarn that's a different color than your working yarn. And this is one of the colors that I'm going to use in my working yarn, but it's not at the beginning. So um, I'll be able to see my stitches very easily when, when I put the next color on, okay? So I'm going to go behind that first black, in front of the next white, behind and in front, all the way around. Now this machine doesn't have a counter on it. Um, and I do have that handheld one that I can use to click, but every color change, except for the white, is 10 rows. So I feel I can count 10 rows without, <laughs> without worrying about it. And so far I've been able to do that. So um, I'm not going to use my counter at all, my hand counter, okay? And so I'm going to take that, I'm gonna put it through that very smallest little hole of the tensioner, okay? And then I, I put my hand underneath, I don't know if you can see my hand in this picture, but um, I put my, my fingers on that yarn that's underneath the yarn um, feeder there and I just give it even a little bit more tension okay and we're going to go around for as many rows of yarn as you feel comfortable doing for waist yarn for me I usually do seven or eight okay I think um, I have a pre-cut uh, piece of yarn here and I think I'm gonna get seven rows out of it so um, I'm not even counting but I'm gonna watch as it goes around but you're gonna you're gonna put on as many rows of waist yarn as you feel comfortable doing I see that sometimes you know, there are makers out there who only use one row of waist yarn. Um, that's all they use, and uh, that's great. For me, I need more. Um, I, I just like that, that bulk that's there before I try to pick up my, my stitches, okay? So I'm coming around. I'm going to just... I mark that divider between my, my last white and my first black needle um, with a black permanent marker, so I always see when it's coming around. And I count my... I think... You know, I can't even see what the numbers are on this. Um, I think this black one is number one, but it might be it might be number 40. Honestly, I can't see right now. Oh, there we go. No, it is number one. But I like the black one to be number one. And so um, that's, that's how I do my work, okay? So I saw that black divider and that black one coming around. I knew I was at the end. All right, so for this project, I have four different colors um, and white. I'm not going to count the white as a color, even though it is, just because to make it easier for you, I'm going to do... You, Label your colors, um, like get a piece of paper and put one, two, three, then white, 
okay? So put your first color for me. My first color is purple. That's going to be number one. My second color is yellow. That's number two. My third color is green. That's number three. So my pattern is going to go 10 rows of one, 10 rows of two, 10 rows of three, then 15 rows of white. And once we get there, then I'll continue the next pattern with you, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and put in my first color, which is my purple. That's my number one. I'm going to knit four needles. Then I take both ends, the back and the front, and I give that a little tuck, tug just to snug up my stitches there. I don't want my, my um, stitches at the beginning of my row to be looser tension than, than the rest, so I always do that. Um, and then I just gave it one little knot to hold it in place there. And then I'm going to put my yarn back into that smallest little tensioner. And I'm going to hold it with my fingers underneath and guide it. Okay. And I'm going to, this is row one. I'm going to do 10 rows. That's one. This is two. Three. And this machine loves this yarn so much. Um, it's three weight yarn. So um, you can use any three weight yarn that you have. Um, if you want your project to be the same size as what I'm making, if you want it to, if you want to use four weight yarn, you go ahead and do that. It's just going to make a little bit bigger of a project, but it'll still be beautiful. You can follow this pattern with whatever weight yarn you like, but I'm using three weight. Okay. So you go ahead and you do 10 rows of that color. And when you finish 10 rows of your first color, come back and see me. Okay. So I'm going to cut that yarn. I'm going to put it between that last white and that first black. And I'm going to get my next color, which for me, number two is yellow. So I'm going to put yellow into the yarn guide there in between those two needles, making sure that I push it all the way down into that little piece that's sticking out there, okay? Um, that'll help the tension. Then I'm going to knit three or four needles, take the end of my working yarn on both ends, and I'm gonna, you can watch this one here. I always pull it until it goes down underneath that divider, okay? And then I know that I've got it the right tension. Now this is, the purple's my working yarn and the yellow is, is project yarn, not working yarn, project yarn. So I'm going to tie a knot in that one. Cut that off a little bit shorter. Put this in the smallest tension hole. And I'm going to, this is row one. I'm going to knit 10 rows. Okay. That's one. This is two. Three. See, I see that black marker coming around and I, I know. That's four, and five, here it comes, that's six, and I'm going to do ten rows, and then I'll see All you right. back. So I have ten rows done, I cut my yarn end, I'm going to put it between that last white and the first black. I'm going to grab color three, which is green. I'm going to put that into the yarn feeder, do another color change, we're going to knit three or four needles, did four there, then we're going to pull tie a knot. This is how we're going to do all of our color changes, of course, okay? Tie a knot there, cut that off. Then we're going to knit 10 more rows. You got it. So that's one, two, I'll see you back when I get to 10, three. All right, it goes so fast. Okay, I'm going to take my green yarn out. I'm going to put it between that last white and the first black. And then we're going to take our white. This is what's going to break up our pattern coloring, okay? So we're going to put that in between. We're going to knit four, four needles. And then we're going to do the same thing. Pull that tight to equal out that tension. Okay, tie a knot. And for the white, I do 15 rows, okay? I want it to be... Um, the divider between the, the stripes. And although it is a stripe, because I'm making it wider, it doesn't look like it's a stripe. It looks like it's like dividing the stripes. And, and that I thought I like that look. Okay, so I'm gonna do 15 rows of white, just like that, okay? So I've got my first color, purple. My, I started with waist yarn, first color, purple, second color, yellow, third color, green. Then we're gonna put white. After every three colors, we're going to put white, but we're using a variation of four colors, okay? Um, so let's do the 15 rows of white, and then I'll, I'll explain the rest to you when we get there. All right, I am there. Okay, I don't even have time to drink a cup of coffee because this is going so fast. So we're going to cut that off, put it in the middle. Then we're going to take our fourth color, okay? So we've got color number one. Mark that down, whatever color you choose. Mark this as, as um, for me, it's purple. So mark number one, 
number two. Can you see that in the camera here? Purple was number one, yellow was number two, green was number three, okay? And then we divide it, we're putting a strip of white after that. Then we're gonna put color number four. So whatever color you're choosing for number four, we're going to put after the white, we're going to do three or four needles. We're going to attach that just like that, okay? And then I'm gonna do 10 rows of this number four, and then I need three, three stripes in between my whites. So if I do number four as my first row, then I'm going to do number one again, which is the purple, and number two, which is yellow, okay? So I'm going to do, I hope I'm not confusing you, that's why I'm telling you to write it down. So your first color, number one, second color, number two, third color, number three, then you're gonna do a band of white, then your fourth color, and then your first color, and your second color, okay? So that's what you're gonna do. 10 rows of number four, then 10 rows of number one, and 10 rows of number two, okay? And then we're going to add another band of white, and I'll see you when I get there. Okay, I got it done. So I've got my fourth color, which is the orange, then my first color, which is purple, my second color, which is yellow. Now I'm going to do 15 rows of white, okay? And so because this is four, one, two, I'm gonna start after the white, I'm gonna start with color number three, which for me is green. So I'm going to do green, orange, and purple. 10 rows of each of those, and that's how I'm gonna, I'm gonna end. So let me just recap for you, okay? Um, we're going to do 10 rows of color number one, 10 rows of color number two, 10 rows of color number three, then you're going to do 15 rows of white, okay? Then you're going to do 10 rows of color number four, 10 rows of color number one, and 10 rows of color number two. Then you're going to do 15 rows of white, okay? And then you're going to do 10 rows of color number three, 10 rows of color number four, and 10 rows of color number one, okay? And so your first color and your very last color are going to be the same. And that is how we are going to do this beautiful 120 row blanket, okay? And we're going to make four panels. That's it, just four panels. So you're seeing how fast this is going. Um, and uh, that's why I decided to make a double baby blanket um, video for you. One in the striped and one in the solid because it makes a beautiful, beautiful gift to give two of these blankets um, to a young mom. So go ahead and finish that. Um, you've, you've written it down, finish that up. And when you get to the end, I'll see you back and we'll add waste yarn and we'll, we'll finish off. But of course, one thing I wanted to mention, once it starts to touch your table, then just pick it up and roll it up into a donut so that um, it keeps the tension around the rim here of your of your work, even as you're knitting. If you're gonna let it um, just hit the table and, and bulk up like this, you're gonna risk dropping your stitches, okay? And that's when your tension gets uneven. So as, as it gets long enough, just roll it up to keep your tension even and then keep going. All right, my friends, have fun. All right, my friends, you made it through and we're going to put our last strand in there. We're gonna take our waist yarn a different color so that we can see our stitches evenly. And we're going to just do the same thing, okay? We're going to, but just tie one knot because we're gonna to have to untie that, okay? We're going to do as many rows as you're comfortable for waist yarn. I always do seven or eight, okay? And I'm gonna keep going until I get there. I'm gonna stay with you just because I'm almost done and I'm gonna take it off, okay? Let's see here. This is my new favorite baby blanket with three weight yarn because man, does it ever feel awesome. Like it really feels so nice. Okay, I think I'm gonna get one more round. No, I'm not gonna make it all the way around with my waist yarn, but it doesn't matter because it's waist yarn. So I'm gonna keep, keep going. Let it go around twice. It doesn't matter at the end of your project if your waist yarn ends in a different place than at the beginning. Um, of course, at the beginning, you have to use your waist yarn and bring it to the uh, two front, the, the last white and the first black needle. But at the end of your project, doesn't matter. If you run out in the middle of the row, you just keep going, okay? All right, so there you go. I have it off my machine. I'm going to um, move my machine and I'll be right back. Okay, so now that we have all 
of our panels done, you've done five that are exactly the same, we are going to sew the ends together. This is what it looks like. Love it. Okay, so first of all, I always um, stretch my work widthwise and lengthwise. Okay, just to make it softer and line up all those stitches, even out my tension. Beautiful. Okay, and then we're going to take one end and we're going to sew it with a straight seam closed. Okay, so we're going to undo that little knot that we made to hold our yarn um, tails. Okay, and we're going to take the, if you're on the same side that I'm on, let me see, is this the, this is the end of the project. Wherever that um, waist yarn stitch is coming out of, that's the first one that you're going to put a stitch marker in, okay? So if you're like me, you're going to grab these wonderful little bobby pins that we all probably have many of laying around our house. They're my favorite. <laughs> and then you're going to go to the left of that. And then your working yarn is this one here, and it's trailing off of this stitch right here, okay? So when you pull on that, that's the loop. And that's where you're going to put the other one, okay? So to the left of this first one, there's two, one on top of the other, you take the top one. Always make sure your ends are outside of your work when, before you start this. Um, on one of these tubes, this is my last tube that I have to, to uh, <laughs> sew up. And on one of them, I wasn't paying attention and, and I sewed my, my ends right in, so I had to undo it. So um, make sure that you have your ends out. Now we're going to look at where that bobby pin is on this, the um, first one we put in. We're going to count around. We know there's 40 stitches on here. So we're going to count 20. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Oops. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. This is my 20th stitch and my 21st stitch. So that's exactly the far side, um, opposite side of, of um, where our bobby pins are. So I'm going to go underneath that 21st one. And then I'm going to pick up the 20th one and work that through. So that's considered two stitches worked. Go down to the bottom, pick up that next stitch, put it through the loop on your hook. That's three. Go up to the top, grab that next stitch, put it through the loop on your hook. That's four. Down to the bottom again, five. Up to the top, six. Down to the bottom, seven. Eight. All the way across, nine. Ten. Oops, I only got half of that stitch, so I'm going to do that again. Okay, that's 10. Down to the bottom. Alternating back and forth like this, grabbing that top row of stitches that you see in your waist yarn until you get to the end. Um, and when you get to the end, you should have counted 40 stitches because if you don't, um, if you don't count 40 and you only like work 39, then you've got one row that's going to start unraveling on you, okay? So you wanna make sure that you work all 40 stitches, okay? So I'm gonna go back and forth like that till I get to the end, and then I'll meet you back. Okay, I am at the end, and I've worked 38 stitches, so if I, I'm gonna go to this bottom row, that's 39. I'm gonna work that one. Pull a little tight from my end string here, just because it's loose, okay? And then I'm gonna pull up on this other bobby pin, and that's 40. Sometimes those end stitches, not in this case, it didn't happen, but sometimes it get they get tight and they're hard to see. So the bobby pins are awesome because you just lift them up and then you'll find that stitch. Okay, so I've worked 40. I'm going to yarn over, pull that through the loop, and I have gone and finished that off. Now, because I did the end project first, this row is always very, very easy to unwind. So I'm going to go ahead and unwind my whole row. Okay, and when I get that all unwound and rolled up, I'll see you back. All right, so there's our beautiful edge. It's so pretty, it looks great, okay? Now we're gonna go down to the other side. And we're gonna do the same thing, okay? We're going to, I'll just start it with you. Um, undo our little knot. Now, now where this waist yarn is coming out of, it's a little different to find these stitches on this other side, on the beginning, okay? This waist yarn here is trailing back through this stitch. So you're gonna put your stitch marker in there and then you're going to go to the left of it and you're going to um, you're going to see that there are two stitches. Don't mistake this one that's upside down like an upside down U. Okay, you want to go when you pull that that is actually the um, the yarn end of your working yarn and that yarn end is coming underneath this stitch here. Go to the one right above it. Okay. And that's the one you want to choose. That's the that's the last row. Or so if you were to just spread this out a little bit, um, then you could see that to the left of your first stitch that you marked, there's 
you, you take the one that's the top of the first two that you see that are like that, okay? So just like so. Then you're going to count around to 21, 20 and 21, and you're going to close your edge just like we did the other side. Um, and when you're done that, I'll show you how you remove. If you're new, I'll show you how we remove this waist germ because it's much more difficult to remove. It's not hard, but it's different than the other side, okay? So go ahead and close that up and I'll see you back. All right, so this was the beginning of our work. So what we're going to do is we're going to go close to this edge here, this side here where our, our um, ends are. We're going to roll up this rim. <laughs> I call it the rim. Roll up the end until you get your first row at the top and you see the little loop that's going over that stitch that's going over. Pinch the stitch and pull out the yarn end. Then go farther down, roll it all the way up until you get that loop that's at the top that's on the um, yarn yarn there you see where my finger right there is pointing pinch that stitch pull it out and you go all the way around okay get to the top pinch the stitch and pull that one out till you do the whole first row like this now if you make a mistake and you grab the second row you'll get a knot and then you'll have to cut this all out so yeah <laughs> I've done it and I've done it on camera actually, um, just to show you that it happens to all of us. Um, and yes, I know that there is another way to do yarn, waste yarn, where you put a guide yarn, um, one color of guide yarn before you do all of these rows and then you just pull out that one um, row. I'm not gonna get into it too much here, but I know some of you are gonna, are gonna be um, looking at me saying, why aren't you doing it the other way? And I do know the other way, um, but I prefer this way, okay? Because I like to wind up my yarn and reuse it um, and to me, I don't think it takes any less time to do it the other way. It takes less time to pull it off, but you still got to un unravel it and rewind it, wound it up. And then when you're putting that guide yarn on, you have to, you know, <laughs> change your yarn colors. Just, I, yeah, I just prefer this way. That other way is great too. And if you love that way, awesome. <laughs> but I do prefer this way. To me, it's just as, it really is just as fast. And, uh, and it works like a charm. So there we go. We've got that other side just like that now this is what our panel looks like we've got purple and yellow and green white peach or orange however you call it I've called it orange at the beginning but it's peach purple yellow white green peach and purple and that is one of five panels so what we're going to do next is we're going to sew these beautiful things together and make a beautiful blanket all right, so closing the ends up, I used a four millimeter crochet hook. Really, you know, it really honestly doesn't matter. You can use whatever size um, works with you and your yarn, um, but that's the size that I used. And then to do our braided join that we're going to put all our, our um, pieces together with, I'm using a 4.5, okay? So what you're gonna do, and I did one for you already, just so I can show you, this is the front side, okay? And this is the back side. And you can see that, that it does look a little bit different. We want to always have the front side facing us when we're joining, okay? So I always put a little marker on that front side and on the end that I start because I'm always going to start at this end because I want my little braided Vs to go in the same direction from every panel. If I start in that other end and come up, then it's going to be the opposite, okay? So I always mark the top of my work, the right side of my work, and the end that I'm going to start my, my seam on, okay? So I'm going to grab my piece. And another thing that I do is when there's two tails like this, flip it so that you have one tail because you want this tail to sew these the very top piece together here. Um, and if you um, put this one on this side, then you'll have it for the next piece, okay? So you're going to go ahead and you're going to um, put your pieces beside each other like this because that's how you're going to join them, making sure that your colors are, are right, okay? Um, and... When you hold these up to each other, you're going to um, probably have one panel that looks like it's longer than the other or shorter than the other. And then you're going to panic and say, why is one longer and one not? It's because when you stretched your work, um, you might have used a little bit more tension on one than the other. But like I say in every video, if you did the same exact amount of stitches on each on each panel um, and you tried to keep the same consistency with your tension it will always work out you do not have to shorten panels okay um, and cut them off you just have to make sure that um, you do the exact same amount of rows on each panel okay so now what we're going to do is we are going to take our piece that we're going to sew on and we're going to put the wrong sides together okay so this is the wrong side that's the wrong side we're going to put the wrong sides together still with the right side facing and we're going to turn it. Let me just lower my camera here for one second. 
so that uh, both sides are up like this. And you want to make sure that when you see the V's on the side here, that the wide part of your V is down here and the point is up here, okay, of each stitch. So the wide part is here, the point is up here, okay? And if when you um, find your natural side that's this one here and it's the opposite, you see how now I have the point at the bottom and the wide part at the top, I'm just going to give it like a little turn to get that next um, row up so that they're both matching and it's exactly the same, okay? So it was just like a half a stitch turn. Okay, then we're going to put it together just like so. I never do the first stitch because I always use that. I always sew it in with this tail. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my crochet hook. I've got this lined up the way I want it to. Okay. I'm going to start in the second stitch. So I'm not going to start in this one. I'm going to start in this one, which means I'm going to not start in this one here. I'm going to start in this one. Okay, um, this this one looks like it's got a little knot in the, at the top here, which you could be fooled as to which stitch is which. And if that's the case, just go down to your to your um, color change and count them up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so I'm going to go into this one. Sometimes it's hard to get into. Pull up that little bar. Then I'm going to go across to this next one. Pull up that little bar just like that and put it one through the other. Okay. Then this is where I came out right here. So I'm going to count that as one and go down two. So I'm missing this bar right here. And I'm going to pick up this one. So I always count one, two, pick that up, pull it through. This is where we, our work was coming out of. So one, two, pick that bar up. Okay. Making sure that I keep this row straight all the way down. Um, and don't panic. You don't have to have it straight all the way down, just straight for a section. Okay. Um, and then when you get to further down, you're going to make another section. Um, so just go in little pieces at a time so that um, you're, you're not um, worried about not having a straight, not staying on this same row. Because um, if, you, if you're holding way too far down, then, then you're gonna, your rows are going to twist. So work, work about a six inch piece at a time, making sure you're staying on that exact same row on both sides, going all the way down. Okay, so one, two, one, two. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, and there's where my color change happens. Okay, because I started in the same stitch and I've done the same rows, it's going to match up. Okay, and then I'm going to go one, two, one, two, one, two. I'm going to do this all the way down my piece. Okay, one, two. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, and one, two. Okay. And you're going to keep doing that all the way down your piece until you get to the end. I literally do this all the time. I literally count to, I mean, I can see it, um, but I always count because I always, um, I just, it just always works out for me and I, I never have to go back and undo it um, because I, I think if I just take that little extra time, then, then uh, I know that it's, it's going to work. And so that's what I do. Okay. Going to twist it again. White's hard to see in the camera, so I'm going to shut this off, but that's what you're going to do all the way down your piece and it will line up beautifully okay so when you get to the end see me back and I'll show you how I tie off all right so I'm at the end I have one more to pin so I'm not going to count two here because I can't get that very top there's only one stitch left so I'm going to go in here pick that up then I'm going to see if I can pick up this one here nope I'm not going to be able to so that's where I yarn over and I pull it through the loop and then I take my needle And what I do is I uh, go across, it's gonna fall out of my needle here. Go across and I pick up the one stitch on this side. And then I pick up the very first stitch on that side. And then I make a knot, okay? Then I go in just underneath that stitch and I make another knot, just like that. 
and I go ahead and I hide this yarn end. I just go one way because I'm going to do a crochet border around it, so I'll um, I will reinforce the reinforce it in there by the with the crochet stitch. But if you're not going to put a border on it, just go back and forth a couple times, okay? All right. So there we ha have it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to this side and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take this tail. And I'm going to pick up that stitch at the very top there. Go back into this one. Get underneath there. Okay. And tie that off. And then I'm going to hide this as well. I'm going to tie one more knot because that's not getting too tight. There we go. And then um, for this one, I think I do need to tie another one because it's fairly loose. That was a long reach. with a short string, okay? Then I'm gonna hide this one as well. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to grab our next piece. Okay, so I'll hide that in a minute. But we've got our, our bobby pin here showing us that this is the side that we want facing up and this is the end we're gonna start. So I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna move it across. Now, when you get a, um, a good eye as to what the, um, what the top is here and what, you know what end you started on just by looking at the braid you don't need your bobby pin but if you're new and, and you're um and you're unsure then that's a, a great tip for you to use okay so now i'm going to grab my next panel and i'm going to do the same thing i'm going to line them up like that making sure my tail is on this far end so that i can use that for sewing the the next piece and then i'm going to take this piece i'm going to put them up together like this i'm going to find that row where the wide part of the stitch is facing down and I'm going to begin sewing this piece on the same way I just did the other one, finishing off um, my ends. And then I'm going to add my um, all the pieces until I have all five pieces attached. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take your needle and you're going to sew in all of your ends that are still there. Okay. And once you get all your ends sewn in, um, then um, grab your crochet hook. And I'm going to still use with my three weight yarn, a 4.5 millimeter yarn or millimeter hook. Um, for this particular yarn, whatever yarn you're using and whatever hook um, you're most comfortable with for that yarn, go ahead and use that um, and, and grab it and then we'll start our border, okay? So go ahead, finish putting all your pieces on just the way I just showed you um, with the braided stitch and the braided join and then I'll see you back when you're done all that. Okay, there we have it. We have our finished blanket. Now generally, um, I would have this blanket so that the, the braided join here would be vertical so so it would be it would be longer vertically like this and then more narrow horizontally like this but for this baby blanket it's the opposite okay these braided joins are going to be our horizontal <laughs> rows and the stripes are like up and down like this because it's longer this way than it is this way um this blanket measures it measures um width wise it's 21 and a half inches when you've got your your um, crochet border on and lengthwise it's 27 and a half inches so it's 27 and a half by 21 and a half which is a very nice size for a stroller blanket very nice size for um to throw over the baby um just if they're in a car seat or um you know just if you're holding your baby on your lap and you just want a nice little blanket to put over top um great for that great to just throw over the shoulder if you're a breastfeeding mother it's just a great size for that okay and uh yeah, for, but for me, I just got to get used to the fact that um, it is really, it goes this way. These actually, because it's a braided join, they do actually line up. It's just how it's, how it's um, sitting. But this is the top and this is, this is the, the width. It's how this blanket is. I have a hard time even explaining it because it goes so against what my brain sees. Um, but, but it's pretty. It's very, very pretty. And I've got the... The peach one here, that's all done too, okay? Except for one end to, to uh, sew in. But this is what it looks like, like so pretty, okay? So this would be where the head would be and the body would come this way because the, these braided join are going this way because the width is, is, the, is the shorter part, okay? So this is a plain one and I'm telling you, my friends, it just looks like it really does look so pretty. Um, 
this is my first blanket that I've made in a solid color. Like, I gotta tell you, I like color. And this is the first one, but I love it. And I think that this just makes such a beautiful set um, to give as a gift. Okay, so there we go. We're going to work on this um, very, very simple crochet border next. Now, if you don't crochet and you don't want to learn how to crochet, you just leave it the way it is, just like that, and it's beautiful, okay? If you wanna add just a little bit more embellishment and do a little um, loopy stitch like this, it's very, very easy and you can easily learn. You're going to grab your um, 4.5 millimeter hook. You're going to grab whatever color of yarn choice that you wanna use. I am going to use the peach because then when I have these two together, I, I think it just um, helps draw them together a little bit better um, and makes it more look like a set. So I'm gonna do a peach border on this one as well. So I'm going to grab that and I'll be right back with you. All right, so I've got a slip knot on my hook. Just around the finger, make a slip knot, okay? Then I'm gonna put that tail in the back. I'm gonna I'm gonna choose um, the side here. Now, normally my vision that would say that this is the top, but it's actually the side <laughs> on this particular project. We're gonna look at our stitches and we're gonna grab the row where the wide part of the V is at the top. And I'm gonna go into that V. I'm going to yarn over, bring that yarn through that stitch and through the loop that's on my hook. And then at this tail is at the back there. I'm going to chain one. Then into that same row, I'm going to do a single crochet, okay? Then I'm going to find the next row. So then basically you're going over two, two bars there and you're going into the next row and you're doing a single crochet, okay? Go into the next row where the wide part of the V is up. You're gonna do a single crochet. I've done three single crochets. I'm going to take my stitch marker. I'm going to put it in that first single crochet so that I know which one I'm going to do a slip stitch to join to when I get all the way around, okay? So then I'm gonna go into that next row single crochet, next row, and I can tell where the next row is by seeing that the wide part of the V is, is at the top of the stitch, so okay, there we go, until I get to the corner. So now I'm going to go into the corner, I'm going to do a single crochet, I'm going to do a chain two, you can do a chain one if you prefer, but I, I'm going to do a chain two, and then I'm going to do another single crochet. So I did a single crochet, chain two, single crochet into that corner. Now we're gonna come down our rows where you see your stitches. You see very clearly those Vs, right? Um, the stitches, we're gonna go into every second one. I'm gonna miss this one. I'm gonna pick up both bars of that row and I'm gonna yarn over, I'm gonna do a single crochet. I'm gonna miss the next one and I'm going to single crochet into the next one. Miss the next one single crochet into the next one and do that all the way across okay missing one and single crocheting into the next one you're going to do that all the way down then when you get to your corner you're going to do a single crochet chain two single crochet in the every all four corners and then on your seamed sides like this again you're going to go into um, every row so that every row where the the wide part of the v is at the top of the stitch that's how you're going to do your single crochet row all the way around your blanket so once you get to the to the end here back to the beginning here i always actually start on either the top or the side um, i never start in the corner some people start in the corner i i always will start um on one of the sides okay but you also I should have mentioned this earlier you want to start um, with your project the right side of your project facing you so that when you're crocheting the right side of the crochet is, is also facing up okay so make sure that uh, that your your um, that you're crocheting from that side so the right side of your fabric is facing you as you crochet okay and then go all the way around like that with your row of single crochet and when you get to the end um, I'll show you what the next row is all right so we made it around and it's looking good. Now you can probably see why I call this um, a blanket a day. <laughs> it's a smaller baby blanket, um, but I think that those are very valuable too. Like most of the baby blankets that I've made and put on, on the channel are bigger baby blankets. But this I think is going to be a size that a mom is going to just want to grab on just pretty much every occasion. It's It just looks like it's such a practical size. I wish I had a newborn too, uh, <laughs> or a little baby to show you. You know what, even for a toddler to carry this around as one of their their 
um, what do you call those blankets? Um, security blanket. Oh, this is perfect size for a toddler blanket just to carry around. Um, okay. But anyways, let's, let's move on. We're going to put our hook into where that stitch is, where our, our, our um, stitch marker is. We're going to yarn over, pull it through that stitch, pull it through the loop that was on our hook. And that is a slip stitch. What we're going to do next is we're going to chain up three. One, two, three. We're going to skip this next stitch and we're going to slip stitch into the next one. Just like that. Then we're going to chain up three. One, two, three. We're going to miss the next one. Slip stitch into the next one. We're going to do this all the way around. It is so easy, but before you do that, actually before I keep talking here, you're going to put your stitch marker in your slip stitch there. Just so that you know where to, to join. Okay. So then you're going to miss this one, go into this next one, chain up three, and then I'm going to skip this one and go into this next one. This is my corner right here. Okay. So if I go, if I skip this one and I go into this one, then I don't have one to skip to go into the corner, but that's okay because to get close to the corner is actually good. So I'm going to continue my pattern, chain three. And I'm not going to skip one. I'm always going to go into that corner. Never miss the corner. But you don't have to do anything different in this corner. My yarn is splitting for some reason. Let's just do that again. You don't have to do anything different. You're just going to do your, your slip stitch. Chain three. Then you're going to skip one. Um, and if this one is too far, like from there to there, I think that's a little far. So, oh no, because there's one right there that I missed. Okay, that's why. So, but if it is too far, you can always go into the one that's right beside your corner. Because um, that might make your corner even look a little bit nicer. I'll do it, actually, and I'll show you. So, if you, if you did one on either side of your corner and not skipped, then and then started your skips pattern, um, that, that works nicely. You can do it either way. You just um, look at it after you've done it. If you skip the one that's right before your corner and skip the one that's right after your corner, then take a look at it and see if you like it, okay? Um, I like my corners to be nice and neat, so I, I like how that worked. So I'm going to, I, I did the one right before and I did the right one right after. And then I'm just gonna continue my pattern. I'm going to slip stitch to join, chain three. So we're getting just a little wave effect. But this blanket is a smaller blanket. It's a, it's a very dainty kind of blanket. Um, so I think that it warrants just a very simple border, which is why I chose this one. Um, and you know what? Seriously, you don't even have to do a border. But I think that this just gives it a little bit um, more of a finished look. But also then it matches it to better to your other blanket because you've you've done the same color border on both. Okay. And so that, that's uh, the reasoning why um, I'm choosing to do the same color. Then when it's up against that next other peach blanket, oh, yo, this keeps splitting on me. Up against that other peach blanket, you can tell that I've made it as a set, okay? So you can go ahead and finish that. You're slip stitching, chaining three, skipping a stitch, slip stitching, chaining three, skipping a stitch all the way around. And when you get to where you started, you're going to slip stitch into that place where your bobby pin is, slip stitch to join, then you're going to yarn over and pull it through that loop to fasten off and you will have completed your beautiful little baby blanket. You'll have two that are just so sweet. Okay. And, and I think for the size of this blanket and, um, just because it's a nice set, uh, it's a great gift idea. I'm going to, I'm going to keep making these as sets. Um, and that's how I offer it to you in this tutorial is to make them as a set. Um, because, uh, they just make a beautiful gift beautiful beautiful gift idea so um there you have it my friends i hope you enjoyed this tutorial please don't forget to give it a thumbs up um, and subscribe if you haven't done so already and come on over to my facebook group koala knits and knacks and join us over there too um we'd love to have you as a part of that group if you if you're not um already okay so thanks again my friends i hope you have a great great day um please show all your creations that you make all your or all the bl blankets that you make in whatever color variations that you do um inspire us <laughs> with your beautiful work okay my friends have a great day talk to you soon